the Sweet Baby Ink curse is alive and well with the upcoming release of Unknown 9 Awakening that is looking to be a surefire disaster when it hits retail. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And this game came to my attention as a lot of people just started talking about it and showing up everywhere I was looking. I was like, huh. There's a weird looking game and wouldn't you know it, Sweet Baby Ink is involved with it. And I started watching some of the trailers and I was like, oh, okay, there might be some potential here. I know the graphics aren't all that great, but it's maybe a double A style game. I'm not expecting, you know, this massive triple A perfection from every single game. I want to give it a shot. And as I start watching it and listening to the trailer and listening to the in-game cutscenes, I'm just like... Man, this game, not only does the combat look clunky as hell, but it strikes me as generic, boring, done before, retread a million times. What's so special about this? And at the end of the day, what's special is culture. It's Sweet Baby Ink. Buy it or else you're a bigot. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down Unknown 9 Awakening and why this game is going to crash and burn as soon as it hits retail. The gaming landscape has seen its fair share of forgettable titles these days, but Unknown 9 Awakening is shaping up to be a notch above the rest of those. With Sweet Baby Ink seemingly cursing anything it touches these days, the excitement levels out there in the community are pretty much non-existent and i'll get to that in a little bit but first i want to give you guys my thoughts on this game and why i think it's going to be absolutely awful the gameplay revealed so far unknown 9 feels like a cheap throwback to generic titles of the late 2000s and while admittedly there's a certain nostalgia to games like that it's because the games were really good when it comes to gameplay you could look past the graphics but when the gameplay gets shown here in the actual trailers that are officially produced by Bandai Namco and put out there for all to see, you got to take a step back and be like, what the hell is going on right now? How is this even a thing? Who greenlit this and thought it was going to be a good idea? The game looks like it's a decade old before it's even released. Unknown 9 looks more like a relic than something ready to compete with blockbuster games coming out today or even indies that are on the same graphical level. And pair that with the over-the-top cultural injections throughout that I just couldn't help but ignore. It feels like they're going over the top to make everything they touch extremely inclusive, to have tons of cultural injection in the game that if you're not accepting of it, you're the problem. It's almost like they're trying to make up for a lack of talent when it comes to making a game by saying, well, hey, it's got culture in it. And because of that, you should play it because that's a reason gamers play games, right? Then you see that they put the main protagonist as a female and how she is like throwing punches and kicking men in the game that are literally twice her size and knocking them over. And I can't help but look at this, pair it with how Sweet Baby Inc. is one of the companies behind it, and how this is all going in together is girl power, empowering feminism, and making it so that the girls can feel like they have some sort of energy that the guys just aren't recognizing. And I look at the game and I'm like, this is not what the game is all about. It's not what gaming should include or ever has involved. You're trying to inject socio-political agendas into the games to shove your narrative down everyone's throats instead of just making a fun game that makes sense. Unknown 9 boasts the usual set of generic mechanics with climbing up conveniently placed ledges, stealth sections, combat that looks more clunky than satisfying, and the game's biggest hook being a stepping ability, which allows you to control enemies momentarily. But according to plenty of people who have had the hands-on experience with this game already, they said that big hook feels more tacked on than a full fleshed out thing that would draw people into the game. And that's a problem. And speaking of problems, looking at these quote unquote professional reviewers out there like PC Gamer and the like that had early access to playing this game so that they could inform their audiences about it took a less than enthusiastic approach to what their feelings were after having some time with it, which is in some stark contrast to what seems like every game that gets pushed out there with a narrative and agenda, that they go over the top, bend over backwards to say how just fantastic the experience was just because it has a message they agree with in it. 
They're not even doing that with this game, which tells me it has even more issues than what we're seeing with the gameplay so far. And when I say the game is filled with cultural injections throughout it, I want you guys to take a listen to this trailer because when I was listening to it, I thought it was in the wrong language. The, I believe, French accent of the person narrating it was so thick that I couldn't even understand what they were saying. It's almost like they're telling people, prepare yourselves for a culture that's not your own and buy it because that's what real gamers do. I will not twice the stealthy approach, but triggers the quest star detector. Several opponents are alerted, but she has the tools to come out victorious. She distances herself from her assailants to assess the situation. An explosive hazard is near. The community reaction to that trailer and the other gameplay trailer and everything that has been shown off so far about this has been less than great to put it nicely. In fact, the dislikes are far outweighing the likes and the comments are following suit with many people confused about why the game even exists in the first place and talking about how the game looks like it's a PlayStation 3 graphics and how it's clearly being made for all 23 people in the modern audience. But all of that's well and good. It's the same tried and true sweet baby ink failures that we're all used to. What stood out to me about this game was something more than that though. It was how they took the Concord approach to putting the cart before the horse and creating this entire transmedia push that includes comics, novels, podcasts. I mean, that's just the start of it. They put so much into the back end of this product that they basically felt like this was going to be like their baby that gets pushed forward in the next generation of gaming. And I'm like, why should we care about it? You haven't even sold us on the game and yet you already have a comic lineup, a podcast lineup, and the book lineup, like everything already talking about this game in the background. I get it. You guys are passionate about this product, but at the end of the day, if the game sucks, all this other stuff does not matter. Now, I've talked plenty about why I'm not a big fan of the gameplay mechanics and how the game seems to have a heavy emphasis on cultural narratives. But what do they state as the summary of what Unknown Nine Awakening even is? Well, you are Haruna, a questador born with the ability to venture into a mysterious dimension, the Fold. On her quest for powerful hidden knowledge, she must learn to master the powers of the Fold to fight a secret society with a hostile agenda. Which seems, I gotta be honest, fairly generic. Maybe it's more interesting when you get into playing the game, but on the surface seems like a very generic game. And as far as the interest in this, it's laughably bad. Now, part of that might be because of the price tag of $49.99 USD. They are asking $50 for what amounts to be I guess a step above an indie game, but definitely not a triple A game. And they're expecting people to shell out $50 USD for a game that looks like it could play on the PlayStation 2. Let's look at the pre-order information and the wish list. First off, on the top most wish listed games on Steam, I'll start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and not locating Unknown 9. And this game comes out in less than a month from recording this video which is not a great sign for future prospects on sales. And this game comes out October 17th. That's less than a month away. There is literally zero interest in this title. And then going over to Twitter, Stuttering Craig on Twitter said, My insider had some pre-order info about Unknown Nine Awakening, the action-adventure game linked to Sweet Baby Inc. In their 900 stores, they've seen a total of 42 total pre-orders for this game. That's less than one-fifth as many as Concord. It releases next month. It's DOA. That is a death knell for gaming. The pre-sales typically give a good indication of how many people are at least interested in looking at this game and picking it up. But by all accounts, I'm someone that like lives, breathes, eats, sleeps, and loves this stuff. 
and I hadn't even heard of this game. And I feel like that's because Bandai Namco is trying to hide the fact that Sweet Baby Inc. is attached to it because they know, they understand, they've seen the lack of sales from other games they're attached to. And in Bandai Namco's defense, if you want to go there, they probably signed on with Sweet Baby Inc. thinking that it was going to help them and push something that's like culture and ESG scores and thinking that this was the, the new wave of gaming back when they signed on with them. And fast forward to present day when reality is hitting everyone, they are trying to hide that fact as much as possible. And checking into the developer, it all makes sense because on their website, this is the first game that they have any credit to putting together. And of course they say, bringing a global cast of characters to life, our studio's talented team has created a diverse cast of unforgettable characters hailing from all over the world. At the forefront of this distinctive lineup is tough-as-nails heroine Haruna, whose otherworldly abilities make her a fierce adversary, which goes in line with my first initial reactions to exactly where this is all going. The developer's name is Reflector, and of course, they're located in Montreal, it's a Montreal studio, probably right across the street from Ubisoft and Sweet Baby Inc. Because again, it's all one big club and you're not in it. All of these companies are working together with companies like consultancy groups of Sweet Baby Inc. to push a message, push an agenda, raise their ESG scores, and pretend like they're doing it for the passion of the game instead of what the real reason is. Not to mention when they talk about the role of video games in our universes, they say, the video games we develop play crucial roles in shaping the other stories that take place in our universes. Meaning, translation, we are going to use video games as a form of activism to push an agenda on the masses. And that's really all you need to know about this studio and why not only the game's going to fail, but the studio will be yet another victim of the Sweet Baby Inc. curse. And judging by their website, they have no one to blame but themselves. Despite some potentially novel ideas, I mean, I don't want to completely trash the game, it doesn't look like a complete garbage heap like some of the other Sweet Baby Ink games I've seen. Honestly, it just strikes me as underwhelming and overly generic and extremely culturally sensitive to shoving someone else's culture in your face and trying to use that as a main selling point for a video game that I don't know anybody in their right mind that has ever purchased a game on that point alone. Unknown 9 is simply not the title to change anyone's mind about Sweet Baby Inc, nor should it. And in today's unforgiving landscape of video games, very average just won't do it. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. If you guys want more information on Unknown 9 and just how much of a failure this game is definitely going to be, check out smashjt.com for the full article. I will link it in the description below. If you appreciate what I'm doing, please consider hitting that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. With the Rangers and Dante taken care of, she can focus her offensive on the Bruiser. Aruna blocks his punches, lands a few hits, and evades his grappling attempt. Smash,